Welcome back to the Online Education Success Series of the Explorations Learning Network. I'm so happy to see you again because today we'll be exploring very important stuff. Getting started with your online classes. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson and this is the Explorations Learning Network. Don't worry, <laughs> you know this one. What's the greatest advantage to online learning? Do, 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 do. The convenience of it all. See how easy that was? And now to make things even easier on you, I'm going to go over exactly what you need to do before you can actually start attending your online classes. We will cover selecting an online training provider, enrolling with a school, selecting the course, registering for the course, and finally, paying for the course. Step number one. The first thing you need to do in order to take an online class is to find an online school or training provider. And believe me, there are so many options out there, but don't feel overwhelmed. Choices are a good thing. According to recent statistics, most colleges and universities offer online training classes. In some cases, you can even take these classes for free, even at some of the nation's top universities like Stanford, MIT, and Harvard. MOOCs, Massive Online Open Courses, allow anyone to take classes completely free. But if you want credit for these classes, you'll have to pay tuition. If you're not interested in courses offered at colleges or universities, you can take courses provided by private online educators. And just like with colleges, there are many different subjects to choose from. Some private online educators include Ed2Go, Lynda.com, and Khan Academy, just to name a few. You can take these classes to learn how to speak a language, um, manage a business, study medical coding, or even to learn how to sew. I made this entire outfit myself. <laughs> Remember though, if the courses are not endorsed by an accredited college or university, the credits may not be transferable. In other words, you may not be able to use them to obtain a college degree. In addition to private online education providers, colleges, and universities, your employer may also use online education to train you for your job. The cool thing about these courses is that they're always free and in many cases are also part of the on-the-job training process. Okay, step two. Once you've selected a school or training provider, you'll need to register as a student. A lot of the time, the registration process is easy. You simply create an online account. However, in some situations, the process is a little more involved. If you're taking classes through your employer, they may create an account for you as part of your hiring process. The registration process with a college or university can be a bit more involved. This may include an orientation process as well as submitting a transcript of courses that you've taken from other colleges or universities. The new student orientation ensures that you understand how to navigate the online class as well as policies regarding academic integrity and ways to help you when you need it, like using the help desk. One final activity in the registration process is placement testing. Placement tests assess your skills in mathematics, reading, and writing. These assessments help the school place you in the class that best fits your needs. Keep in mind that placement tests are often proctored by a testing official, someone that will require you to appear in person and verify you are actually the student you claim to be. You'll typically need to show up for your placement test with some form of picture ID. Once you've registered with the school, you'll need to select your course. Which brings us to step three, selecting a course. There are many different types of online courses. Some online courses are self-paced and the instruction is completely provided by the computer or learning management system. Other courses have an instructor 
and in some cases may also be hosted by facilitators. MOOCs have tens of thousands of students. Many online courses require you to complete individual assignments as well as assignments with other students as part of a learning team. In addition, some courses, referred to as hybrid courses, require you to attend at least one face-to-face -face session during the course. Selecting the course that's right for you is an important part of being successful as an online student. It's important to remember that not all online courses are the same, so make sure you get all the details about the class before you register. Once you've selected the course, you need to register or sign up for the course. Step 4. Registering for the course. The first step in the registration process is making sure that there's room in the class for you. These spaces are often referred to as seats. If all the seats are full, you probably won't be able to get into that class, but don't stress. There may be additional sections of the class that still have seats available, or the class may be offered in the near future. You may want to call the help desk or your advisor if the class appears full and have them check on the availability of upcoming sections. However, if there is room for you in the class, go right ahead and register. Since you're already a student enrolled in the school, the registration process is fairly simple. However, this is probably the place where we should mention prerequisites. Some courses require that you demonstrate prerequisite knowledge before you can register for a new course. Your prerequisite knowledge may have been demonstrated when you completed your placement testing as part of your enrollment process. Also, submitting your transcripts may demonstrate that you've completed the prerequisite courses, courses that gave you the foundational knowledge in the subject. Either way, Make sure you have the prerequisite knowledge and skills in place if it's required for the course that you want to take. Just select the course and fill in the information requested, usually your student account information. Typically, you'll receive an automated message confirming that you are successfully enrolled in the course. As is more often the case, you'll probably get a message reminding you to first pay for the course. Step 5 the final step in the school frontier. Paying for your education. There are many different ways to pay for your online classes. In some cases, you may not have to spend any money at all. Chances are, if your employer is requiring you to take the course, they'll be paying for it. Remember that MOOCs are also free, unless you want to spend the money to get the credit. Generally, courses that are not required for credit, are not part of a degree program, or other professional certification are less expensive. Most online courses provided by colleges and universities will cost you the same amount as face-to-face -face classes. You may qualify for financial assistance with online classes. There are many grants and scholarships available for people choosing to go back to school. To see if you qualify for assistance, you may need to fill out a free application for federal student aid, more commonly referred to as FAFSA. Your FAFSA, which you most likely submitted as part of a student enrollment process at a college or university, will assist college officials in determining the types and amount of financial aid that you can receive. Some financial aid in the forms of grants and scholarships does not require you to pay back the money if you successfully complete your education. According to a number of researchers, there is a great deal of scholarship funds that are not awarded each year due to a lack of applications. In addition to grants and scholarships, you may also qualify for a student loan. Typically, these loans do not have to be paid back until you complete your education or stop being a student. Check with your financial aid advisor on all the details. Be sure to explore all your financial aid options. There's lots of money out there to help people who want to get back to school. Finally, if you don't qualify for any financial assistance, you may need to simply pay for the course with the money that you've been saving. That's okay. An investment in your education is always a good idea. According to recent studies, individuals with more education 
typically earn more than individuals with lower levels of education. Okay, so now that you know everything about getting started with an online class, what are you waiting for? Until next time. The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.